friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are doing a slightly different video. We are gonna do a house tour slash what I've done to my house since we moved in. Now, Ian and I bought this house about a year and a half ago, and a lot of the renovations that we did, we did prior to me starting my YouTube channel. But I have the photos of what this house used to look like, and obviously I can show you what it looks like now. So I thought it would be fun to kind of walk through all the rooms, see what changed and what we kept, and maybe talk about why we did the things we did. So in here, we did a few things. One, there used to be a closet right here, and it was intended to be a coat closet for when people use the front door. But we actually flipped it around and made it accessible to the primary bedroom so that we had dual closets. As you guys saw around Christmas, we also redid the bookcase and that helped to brighten the space up. We also, what helped to brighten it up was putting in can lighting. So previously we had two fans, one had a light and one did not. So this end of the room actually got a lot of light whereas the other side did not and it kind of drove me crazy to be honest. We also painted in here the walls and the moldings, got new curtains, um, and one major thing was actually, another major thing that we did is actually this wall behind me. It used to be wood paneling, the like not so nice wood paneling, and we actually skim coated it. We did not tear it out, but we did skim coat it and so that it has a very similar drywall finish as the rest of the house. So in the kitchen, we kept it pretty simple. We did very min minimal updates to this room. The cabinetry was in amazing shape. Is cherry the color that I would pick if I was buying new cabinetry? No, but to replace these cabinets would be quite a penny and we just didn't have it in the budget or want it. But what we did do is we updated the countertops to be a white quartz and we changed out the knobs. This is so simple, so easy to do. It creates more of a modern look. We also updated our appliances to stainless steel. What was in here previously was white. We had to replace the refrigerator anyway. So it just made sense to replace as needed. Our dishwasher leaked. We had to get a new one over the Christmas before last. So really the stove and microwave were the last two that we did back last summer. Also a major thing we did in here was paint. This room used to be yellow on top and pea green on the bottom and you know for some they might like it it's kind of eclectic it definitely had a 2010s vibe um i wanted to brighten it up this room is the center of the home literally and figuratively so we wanted to ensure like it doesn't get that much light so we wanted to try and make it as bright as possible we also have this piece of furniture this guy right here um, from a previous rental and you know the space is not quite big enough to have a real built-in island and a table so this gives us the extra storage we need without having to do more and more um, also in here we updated the light in the dining room so I found this great lamp this great light off of Etsy I'll try to link it if it's still available below um, Another thing that's one of my favorite things is the piece of art over our bar cart. So this piece is actually by Tyler Keaton Robinson, I think is his name. He's a British Columbian um, artist up in Canada and his work is amazing. I, I just love it. So anyway, that's probably my biggest splurge. I think Ian bought that for me for a birthday present, I believe. So. Um, one of my favorites. It kind of gives me rainfall or rainforest vibes. Um, but yeah, anyway, love it.
this space is our laundry room. And in here, we did a lot. This was an unfinished space that, I'm not sure if I have pictures. If I do, I'll insert them. But it was not finished. You know, we did have this exterior brick wall here. It was all about the hot water heater and the laundry. But I really wanted a clean space to be able to do our laundry. Also, our kitchen's kind of small, so then there's not a ton of cabinetry. So we did install all of this IKEA closet system. I think it's the pack system, so that we could have additional storage. So I'll kind of give you the lay of the land. The first one is our pantry. The second one is laundry, or no, broom closet. The third is laundry, and the fourth is like tools and stuff. So anyway, and I also have like, I wanted a drying area. So we installed a bar, like a hanging rack bar. It's phenomenal. So you can hang all of your clothes that you don't want to dry. We also have Delilah's food bowls and stuff here. And then one improvement we made that I think really jazzed up this space. There wasn't a whole lot we could do here, but adding this shelf instead of the one that was kind of like across the bar here across here we didn't have any room to actually utilize that shelf so bringing it down and this was a diy i'll link it the video below super easy to install and really utilitarian and really nice to have this extra shelf for laundry detergent and dryer sheets and all of that kind of stuff I think this is one of the rooms that had the biggest transformation. This bathroom was stuck in the 70s, as a lot of the rooms were, but we pretty much pulled everything out. So in here we painted. It's a very small bathroom. We only have one in the home, which some people might find a little challenging, and it is sometimes, but honestly... We love our neighborhood. It works for Ian and I. The only time it gets dicey is when we have guests over. So anyway, what we did in here, because it is so small, I think the footprint is only like, I don't know, eight feet by five feet. We wanted to maximize the space. We also wanted it to be the most utilizable space. So we installed, we actually found this amazing Ikea van double sink vanity and it is really great because it's not very wide, but you still get two sinks. So you can share the space with two people. Also, it is a floating vanity, which gives this perceived notion of additional space underneath it. Sometimes it's kind of a trick of the eye, right? Another trick of the eye that we did was actually put a edge to edge mirror all the way across. Ian and I are very tall, we have long arms, and so trying to get ready at the same time, you know, you can't really stand shoulder to shoulder. I mean, if you both get ready and you don't have a long mirror, you're sh standing shoulder to shoulder doing this, right? So um, this allows us to use, have more space to get ready and we can kind of shift and slide as needed. Um, we did put down new tile on the floor we did penny tile, it's classic, it's timeless, it's something you would see here. We opted for a lighter gray grout um, because since it is small, using the lighter gray grout ensured that there wasn't too much contrast and helped to make it still light and airy in here. We did also retile the shower. Um, in our niche, we put the penny tile, so it kind of carried it up there, but um, that spot that space is just you know just typical like a large tile here i'll show you actually so as you can see here we installed a niche um i wish we had done a shelf across here because i feel like you could have gotten extra storage we opted for the black metal um we already had some things that were brass we had some things that were chrome and we just felt that like the black was a nice neutral that could go and has a little bit more modernness to it. Um, another thing that we installed was this additional shelf. So this bathroom gives me major hotel lobby vibes. Like I said, this vanity does not have a lot of space across it. And having this four inch shelf that goes the length, 
you know, you can't put deep stuff on there, but putting your makeup or your creams or your toothpaste or whatever really does make a big difference. So some of the things that I love most about this space that kind of make it unique, I know it's not for everyone. I didn't design it with everyone in mind. I designed it for how Ian and I use it and that I wanted to stay true to the architecture of the home, right? I want there to be a bit of mid-century modern. This house was built in 1957 and you know it wasn't like the it's not an uber like mid-century mod house but I wanted to interject some elements of that some nods to the original character without going too far. I think this bathroom at least for me feels very spacious for how small it is. I think it was we utilized the space as best as we could and I I'm really happy with it. Are there things that I would do differently, you know, or maybe upgrade in the future? Yes, of course. But as everyone, we were working on a budget and we were working with what we had and what we could get available. This was during the height of COVID. And um, unfortunately, materials were hard to source. So anyway, I love how it turned out. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and that's fine. we did what seemed like not a lot of work well in theory not a lot but it made a huge impact the first thing we did was paint all of the trim white that really helped and then we had very old the old 70s ply, or, um, paneling in here as well so I painted all of the walls in the house Myth, Mist of Drift by Sherwin Williams it's a beautiful chameleon color that you know doesn't really read gray doesn't really read white doesn't it's kind of in between it goes with whatever you pick up um also in here what we did was we replaced the old dated carpet with um vinyl flooring luxury vinyl flooring we tried to match it to what's in the kitchen as best as possible they don't make that anymore but we did the closest match we could possibly find um, so yeah, really, really simple in here. We didn't do, it was a lot of work to paint everything, but we didn't make a ton of changes. So I just want to like go to say the power of paint can be so incredible. Um, we loved the brick wall. This was an addition, um, and they added it onto the house back in the seventies and the space with all the natural light. Like, I mean, we get... We have this big window and then an entire wall of windows as well. So the natural light that floods in here is phenomenal every day. It's my favorite place in the, in the house. It's just so warm and cozy and where we spend the most time, honestly. So anywho, I just wanted to like talk about that. A lot of sweat equity went into this room, but really the, the revision, the change to this um, really was impactful by just paint and new flooring and this flooring you could definitely put in yourself like I don't think you need a professional to install it if you're somewhat DIY somewhat handy primary bedroom and this space used to be not even Pepto-Bismol pink but like bubblegum pink or maybe magenta I don't really know but it was a very bold color so the first thing we did I think it was actually the very first project we did was paint this room um so I painted it like I said drift and mist all the way through we recently got a new bed the other major thing that we did was actually flip this closet. So in some of the pictures in the living room, you will see that there was a closet in the front room by the front door. And um, now we have a his closet and a her closet. And they're not connected, which is fine. I don't, Ian and I can share a bathroom, but we cannot share a closet and that's fine. And I'm okay with that. Um, 
I, we also installed a closet system in mine so that I utilize the space better. It is a mess. Maybe one day we'll do an organize with me, but until then, you know, we'll wait. Also, one thing I want to mention is the fan above in our ceiling, or our ceiling fan in here. Previously, there, were the, there was a very, I won't use the word cheap, I'll use the word affordable, white ceiling fan. And it was wobbly, and it did not really meet my aesthetics. Now, I would have loved to have done a beautiful dangling chandelier here. But the reality of it is, is I like to sleep with a fan on and I'm going to sleep with a fan on. So with, this was actually the ceiling fan that was over the dining room table that we then moved into our bedroom because it was perfectly good. Ceiling fans are expensive. And is it the one I would pick out? No, but when I look online as to what is available, I don't really like those either. So this was a great way to not only save money, but also to keep something out of the landfill and stay sustainable. And, you know, again, I would have loved, like, I love the look of a beautiful light fixture, but I need the utilitarianism of the fan. This is our guest room. And I think it is one of my favorite rooms. And I think it's my second favorite room. I think the first favorite room is our sunroom. And my second favorite room is this room. The natural light that we get in here is phenomenal. We really did not do a whole lot of anything in here. Um, we just painted. It was kind of a darker taupey color that was not really a color that I would lean to. Um, in here as well, we have some beautiful, um, heritage pieces that have been passed down to us. I also love the color scheme in here. It's just soothing and calm. And, you know, my favorite furniture piece that we have is Grandma Tilly's, um, dresser that she had with these ornate hand-carved handles on it. And they are just beautiful. And actually this piece behind me was a wedding present that Ian's dad gave to his mom. So this room is special. I actually don't spend a lot of time in here, but um, I really enjoy it. So in here, we did make sure to take the curtains to the ceiling. We have eight foot ceilings, so they're not very tall. Uh, or not eight foot, sorry, nine foot ceilings. So they're not drastically tall, but it is a trick that or it's a design hack that can trick your eye to make you feel as though it's a larger space like we're working with about 1200 square feet and so it's not a huge house like I said it's enough for Ian and I but I want it to feel as though there is this openness and airiness to it so you know by doing things like using lighter tones of paint that you know can kind of pair with different colors as well as hanging your curtains to the top and not using blackout curtains but you know they still provide privacy um also i think the reason why i like this room and why i feel like it gets the most light is because it doesn't actually have blinds on the windows so um it i think that allows the light to flood in like I said, this is our guest room. People are not staying, like, you know, it's not a day-to-day -day thing that somebody is in here. Um, and you can close those and have privacy, which is great. But all in all, you know, it, I think that's why there's a lot of natural light that comes in. Um this is my home. I love it. I just thought that I would share all the projects that we've done. Um, I thought we would talk through things and, and maybe the reasons why we chose to do what we did. I mean, obviously adding a second closet to your primary bedroom is a great idea. We also have a coat closet in the hallway, so we didn't really need a coat closet in the living room and a coat closet in the hallway and a linen closet in the bathroom. So, um, you know, utilizing that for more 
of our personal belongings made a lot of sense. Obviously adding in, or not adding, but finishing off the, the space to the um, mud room really helped and adding storage. Obviously anywhere you can add storage is a great idea. We also have our shed. That was an unfinished space that we made over into Ian's office. It is pouring down rain. I'm not going outside to show you all that, but you can check that out in my video, turning my scary shed into an office space. I will link it below for you. And that goes, that was our first major project that we captured on my channel. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope maybe this sparked some ideas or potentially some some inspiration for what you can do to your space and like how to re-envision your space. Maybe you're working with small square footage too and you need to know how to make the room feel bigger. Um, maybe you need to, you know, like you don't, you're looking for some inspiration for your bathroom and it's small and you only got one or you have one and another small one, like bathroom real estate is, is very coveted. So, you know, utilizing those spaces to the best of your ability is always a wonderful idea. So anyway, with that, I will leave you today. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and come back every Saturday. I upload at 6 a.m. And grab a cup of coffee and come spend your morning with me. Till the next one, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.